battling back from being down three. I think uh, really happy for Nathan because he was able to park that first period and, and really came up big in the second. You didn't see a ton of action in the second, but made some big saves and then obviously made some huge saves in the third period to, to keep us close and then keep the game tied. And, um, and the cat and action that was the difference in the hockey game. And the, the guys in Melbourne played well, but uh, they, they gave us some really good shifts and gave us good energy tonight and got us going in the game on that line and got us back into it. So it was nice to see. Did you say anything between the first and second, or was that a team? Was that the team room? <laughs> yeah, I mean, we, we obviously went in and talked to them. And, you know, I, the big, I guess, message was, you know, we got to own it. We got we to gotta own what we want to be. And if, if we're going to curl up and, and not come back out and come back in the hockey game, then that's what we're going to be. But if we want to be like we talk about, the team that we talk about, then we got to, everybody's got to be accountable. And everybody's got to go out and do their job and make sure that they're executing. It was important, guys, and I need to see that. And it's a huge, uh, it's a huge win for us. It's a huge comeback, and hopefully it's a, it's a good step in some ways. You've uh, mentioned Catanachi's play has been trending upward, if you will, but is this the most confident he's played all season with the puck getting for the net? Yeah, uh, I thought, you know, he's obviously had some good games this year, but he looked the most confident, comfortable out there tonight. Maybe because we put him back at center ice. Mm -hmm. You know, he's a natural centerman. That's where he's played a lot. I thought it showed off his speed a lot more tonight as opposed to being on the wing. Uh, going forward, you know, good coach would probably leave him at center. <laughs> see what I decide to do. <laughs> um, but, you know, uh, he's a good player, and, and it's just that first year is the consistency. Same thing with Joel. You know, tonight Joel was really good. Mm -hmm. He makes guys miss, and uh, he makes plays with the puck. Um, there's other nights where you don't notice him enough, um, and it's, that's consistency. Hopefully, you know, we're, we're in February now, and we can build up that consistency, and, and they're going to be a big part of our team going forward. Is this the most you've seen Danny go to the net in the game? Go to the net at, again. That middle drive, using his speed to get behind defensemen, uh, and and I think it was a good, he's a left shot, so Joel gets the puck a lot. Joel will hold on to it, he'll draw guys in, and then Cat can use his speed to get in behind defensemen, get to the net, and then Gillies is going to go stand in front of the net, or he's going to get somebody. And so that's a pretty good combination of players. And uh, I think that when we get in trouble as a team, sometimes we have too many, maybe too many combinations where we have three guys sitting on the outside. You got to have guys that go to the net, so that was that was big tonight. That the guy at cat size goes to the net, and that killer can establish that in that front presence for us. What's the you know for a coach? It's got to be rewarding. Now again, I don't know if you went in there and gave him a new Rocky speech between you. <laughs> whatever you said, they took it to heart apparently. As a coach, I mean, is that a pretty rewarding thing to watch your team come back after they basically got their ass kicked in the first period? But well, yeah, I mean, it's it's very rewarding. It was uh, it was great to see it, and I'm I'm most happy you know for Nathan. He, he could put that first period behind him and came up huge for us going forward. Uh, and then the guys in front of him got to play, and they got to feel an obligation in Nathan to play. They got to feel an obligation of their teammates to play. And that was, you get a lot of, um, you know, you get a lot of satisfaction in that because uh, that's how good teams work. Uh, and that's, that's a good character win. And I, now we got to, now the bar's been set. This is the way we got to play all the time. Uh, and, you know, you're not going to be perfect every night. And you're not going to come back from three goals every night, but we've got to execute. We've got to make sure we bring that same effort. Do you think that you're having a problem? Knowing Tim was here health tonight? I certainly don't think it hurt him. I know that, uh, <laughs> I know that he uh, he made his presence known, and and I I hope that 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 guys would think twice about who's watching. And, and I think it's important for our players to know. And he came in and talked to him after the game and and let him know he's going to be watching every night. He wants to know how guys are doing. He's going to be talking to me. He's going to be talking to Cunny and. and uh, those guys need to know they're under the microscope. There's no, uh, there's no hiding. You've got to make sure you come out here and you play like that every day. Bagel um, said that he felt like Bristol Line played his best overall game in the season. I mean, was this, um, you know, was it kind of an all-around game for him? Maybe he plays both under the ice, um, or how did you see it? Well, first of all, I, I, I was. You know, you get in these three and three situations, and that's one of your concerns with a 19-year-old defenseman uh, coming in. You know, off of the year that he's had, I worried a little bit about fatigue, and I definitely thought he played his best game of the year. He was really solid defensively; didn't lose any puck battles. He stayed in his battles. His shifts were shorter. Good puck movement, and he was patient with his offense. And then, you know, he made a great play uh, on the on the game-winning goal. Mm -hmm. Nice drop pass to Bags, and 
I, I hope he knew Bags was there and wasn't just guessing. <laughs> um, but, uh, you know, that's a, that's a big time play. And that's, that's the type of player you need to be. Pick your spots offensively and make sure you're being reliable defensively and you're getting the fuck up to the floor. And so hopefully, again, it's a, it's a good step for him. It's not too often you're happy about a drop pass in four and four. No, no, exactly. <laughs> and, and, you know, we caught him on a little bit of a change there. And, and again, I'm hoping that he understood that. And that's why he made that play. And I'm sure Bags is talking to him because, you know, Bags is a good communicator. And, uh, you know, you've got to let your players make plays. There's, there's times when, uh, you know, you've got to let them make plays. And he's going to be a guy who's going to get a little bit of leeway to make some plays. It's just got to be a smart play. And, and he made it tonight. And it was, that was the difference in the game. Again, with the uh, third game of the 3-3 three and three and down 3 nothing after the first period, were you surprised at all with the energy they are able to show in the second and third period? I was. You know, because this is our first 3-3 three and three of the year. You know, when we in the middle of February, we haven't played one of these situations yet, so you don't know what you're going to get. Uh, and, and again, part of our growth as a team is understanding that you know, you've got to be able to come back in situations like that. And uh, I was pleasantly surprised with, with the way that we came out. And again, I, I, I give it to Kat, uh, Gilly, and Armia. You know, that they came out and they got us going. They moved their feet. They really, they, they, there was no quitting those guys tonight. That was a, to me, that was the difference. Well, we asked Larson about the 3 3 and said, ah. Yeah, he just plays that. He'll right. play tomorrow again. There was, but there was a, a few plays in the third period where you think his legs would be down. And he was just doing the same thing he always does, getting back on the back check, stealing the puck away, creating pressure. I mean, for three and three, that would be an easy time to just kind of mosey it on back. Yeah. Or defend or something like that. Well, he's a competitor. I mean, there's nobody. And that's, it worked against you. Your strengths are always your weaknesses, right? Last night, his competitive nature got the best of him. And, and he took a bad penalty. He felt obligated to his team tonight that he needed to come out with a really good effort. And I remember at least two or three times in the offensive zone in the third period where he was using his cutbacks below the goal line. It looked like he had two or three guys draped on and somehow came out with a puck or moved it to somebody that got it to force and he was wide open and moved to other points. That, you know, that's, that's competitive nature and that's grit. And, and we never have to worry about you know, his, his effort level. It's just a matter with him of keeping his emotions in check. And, and he was outstanding tonight. Tim, last thing for me, Tim mentioned between periods that his inkling is to develop the younger guys here in the championship, the playoff atmosphere. Um, and if there are openings coming up, I know it's hard, you know, you're not supposed to speculate and all that, but if there are, he's more likely to call up the, the older guys. Yeah. I'm sure that either way, you're going to affect the chemistry at this level yeah. going down the stretch, which isn't an yeah. easy thing. No, it's not, but I, I mean, that's part of it. I mean, you, you can talk about that all the time. It happens every game, it seems like. You know, somebody's in, somebody's out, somebody's up, somebody's down. So um, the good teams make the adjustments on the fly, and, and they've got to be ready to go. And, you know, that, that's you know something I think that we've been playing through a little bit lately is, is getting, you know, Zig back from injury. And now he slides in to take some minutes from a guy who's probably playing in that role. I, I don't think uh, since Ziggy's been back, he hasn't played on the power play. You know, Mike Sigma is a pretty good player, so that's an adjustment for him. So you're always dealing with those sort of things, and the teams that are successful are the teams that can go seamless. For no matter what happens, guys do their job, and they're committed to, to team success first, and individual accolades will come behind that.